Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery that suggests that at some point our planet Earth was actually extremely different from what it is today. More specifically, as the title says, it may have been a water world. With the global ocean being so large that there were probably no continents and only a few very small islands. So let's talk a little bit more about this discovery and welcome to what the Man. So what we've learned about our planet in the last few decades is that it's gone through a lot of different stages and evolutions. And I don't mean just the visual changes of, for example, how the continents changed. So for example, approximately 800 million years ago, our planet Earth was probably a little bit more similar to this, but it still had a global ocean and it probably still had a lot of different continents as well. Although those continents very likely did not have much life on the surface. This is a simulation made by Ian Webster and the link for this is in the description below. But there are obviously a lot of other faces that our planet had. At some point, our planet went through a few so-called ice bowl stages when it was essentially a very large bowl of ice or at least resembled something with a lot of ice on the surface. And we also believe, billions of years ago, Earth was also very likely purple. Mostly because of the type of life present in the oceans that very likely turned the water purple. But you can also learn more about the purple Earth and the Ice Bowl Earth theories in some of the previous videos. Today we're talking about another discovery. The discovery that suggests Earth was actually a very large water world, somewhat reminiscent to that movie with Kevin Costner, that was made almost 30 years ago and essentially was called Waterworld. Now, interestingly, this paper published very recently discusses just that. As a matter of fact, they find very unique evidence that suggests that approximately 3.2 billion years ago, Earth was actually a water world. Although this is still only the first discovery, so this needs to be confirmed by other scientists. But essentially, this is what the scientists here discovered. Like a lot of other really interesting discoveries, all of this started in Australia. Specifically in the northwest part, that has a lot of different areas that have been preserved for billions of years. And in one of these areas of Australian outback, the scientists discovered that there's actually a very unique hydrothermal system that's been preserved for just over 3 billion years. They've discovered it a long time ago, but only some of the recent investigations have been more thorough to establish what exactly they represent. And so essentially, by analyzing some of the rocks here, um, the scientists were able to establish a few things. And one of the first confirmations from the study is that at some point, Earth was indeed a somewhat hot magma bowl. And when the first water emerged on the planet, it couldn't really exist as liquid water because it was just too hot. So most of it concentrated as water vapor. And this water vapor created these really large clouds across the planet. But obviously, eventually, all of this rain came down to Earth, and as the planet cooled down, the ocean formed as well. We actually still don't really have a good explanation to where exactly water came from, mostly because the explanations vary from between being delivered by comets, delivered by asteroids, or even coming from inside planet Earth and essentially merging from within. And so today, one of the biggest mysteries is still where exactly water really came from. It could also be, of course, all of the explanations together because water could have come from different sources. Either way though, at some point, Earth very likely looked something like this, although it's not entirely certain if there was an ice shelf or not, but it was probably an extremely large water bowl. And it probably stayed this way for quite a while possibly even over a billion years or maybe even a few billion years. Now that's obviously a question we can't really answer right now. What we can answer though is how exactly do scientists know that it probably looked something like this. So to try to discover this, the scientists actually studied 100 different samples from 100 different sites and all of these rock samples had something similar in common. They basically had a very unique composition and more specifically a ratio of oxygen 18 to oxygen 16. Now like with every other element, oxygen also has various isotopes and some isotopes are more common than others. Normally oxygen 16 is the one that's present pretty much everywhere, but sometimes oxygen can also become oxygen 17 or 18, which are also stable isotopes and can survive for a very long time. And even though this one here is about 99.7% of all oxygen, this here can also be a significant amount. And any kind of a percentage deviation usually suggests to us that something may have happened to planet Earth in order for oxygen values to change or at least in order for the isotope values to change. And the reason why oxygen-16 is much more prevalent is actually because it's the main oxygen that's made inside stars. 
So a lot of stars that are initially made of hydrogen will eventually produce oxygen-16. Oxygen-18, however, requires this nitrogen to be made. So when nitrogen captures helium, it then turns into the much less prevalent molecule of oxygen-18. And so because of this, around different planets, this value is usually kind of relatively similar. However, when analyzing these rocks in northwest Australia, the scientists realized that there was actually a lot more oxygen-18 in those rocks compared to the rocks we have today. In other words, the ratio back then was much higher for oxygen-18 than it is today. But what does it have to do with water? Well, it turns out that on our planet, various types of soils that are usually rich in, for example, clay, often prefer to take up oxygen-18 as opposed to oxygen-16. So if there's a lot of soil around and if there's a lot of clay around, usually the oxygen-18 value goes down quite a lot. And so today we have much less oxygen-18 than we did back then. And so one of the bad explanations for why oxygen-18 was much more prevalent 3.2 billion years ago is to imagine Earth as a water world with practically no soil and no continent sticking out. Essentially everything was underwater and so there was nothing on the planet for the oxygen-18 molecule to be absorbed. And we're talking about absorption in the water, by the way, which is why what we're looking at here is essentially an ancient ocean floor, 3.2 billion years old specifically. And so as these rocks interacted with seawater, they essentially left this imprint of different values of oxygen, and this is what allowed the scientists to discover what Earth was like back then. They also simulated various conditions on Earth, trying to see if there was anything else that could cause similar effects. But the easiest and the best explanation was that the Earth was really a water world. And because geologists often use the oxygen 16 to 18 measurements to establish various changes on the planet that may have occurred in the past, this was a telltale sign that something on Earth was very different back then. And so it was very likely the appearance of continents and the shift from the water world to more of a land and water world that shifted the oxygen values. And as soon as Earth acquired plate tectonics and continents started to move around, that's probably when the oxygen-18 values dramatically dropped. But it's very likely that there were no continents at all as well. So something must have caused the continents to appear roughly around 3 billion years ago, or maybe a little bit earlier than that. Now, as I mentioned previously, they don't think the Earth was completely empty. There were probably some islands here and there, but they were not enough to influence the composition of oxygen on the planet. And by the way, all of this oxygen was already probably generated by various types of life living in the oceans. But because of this discovery, there are a lot of new questions now. First of all, this discovery implies that something may have actually caused the continents to appear later on. More specifically, some studies suggested that it was probably some sort of a very large collision, but this is something that we'll definitely need to investigate in a lot more detail now. At the same time, if this discovery is correct, then it's very likely that life did indeed start in the oceans, very likely close to the so-called hydrothermal vents. And this is actually one of the potential theories for where life started. At the same time, if the study is correct, this would also imply that life is very unlikely to start just on land. So basically, we can kind of skip looking for life on planets that do not have liquid water. Or at least the kind of life we have here on Earth, the organic multicellular life. If life indeed needed an ocean world to start, then we need to start looking for more of these objects that have both liquid water and hydrothermal vents. And we know that moons like Enceladus, for example, may have both, so the chances for finding life there are now actually a little bit higher than before. And the other big question is, of course, in regards to plate tectonics and what exactly happened to our planet in order for plate tectonics to actually occur. And this is a really important question because our planet's continents are responsible for maintaining its relatively constant climate and also for being able to recycle a lot of things. Without plate tectonics and without continents, our planet would very likely turn into something similar to a lava world once again, or at least look somewhat similar to Venus, which doesn't have plate tectonics. And so trying to confirm the validity of this study can definitely lead us to some of the more interesting and more important answers of the existence of life on our planet. And because there were several studies in the last few years that suggested that it's very likely that plate tectonics started because of an actual very large collision with our planet, this also kind of gives this theory a lot more credibility as well. So it's quite possible that a lot of things on Earth started as a result of major collisions, including 
plate tectonics and continents, which once again would make our world a very special type of planet that doesn't seem to exist in many other places. But anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and if you've enjoyed watching it, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. You can also read more about the study in the link in the description below, and maybe consider supporting the channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.